what I love about my job is I get to work with all different types of individuals and I get to uh, be out in the public and really um, feel as if I'm helping people on a daily basis. calls so some days we'll go from a call from service at um, Los Osos Middle School and then we'll head across town to Rite Aid and have to go um, help somebody over there so it's every day is a little different on Coast Station we have a little bit more ability to do more proactive activities so go out and um, seek out people that we want to talk to or do things talk to business owners and see kind of what their concerns are in the community so each day is a little different but most days as long as we're responding to calls for service, we have a little bit of freedom to do what we would like in terms of what we're achieving. One of the big misconceptions is we have the answer for everything. People don't necessarily know the place to go to ask questions or who has the information and answers that they need for specific questions. So the default is to call their local law enforcement agency. And so um, that's a great way for us to interact with the public is to inform them of the correct locations to find the answers that they need. So that has been a really challenging and a really good way to grow because you have to learn a lot of things and or at least figure out where to tell people to go look for information. Come out with your hands up. I will send my dog. He will find you. He will bite you. Hold on. I have a dog that is my partner 24-7. Uh, I take him home with me. He rides with me 10 uh, hours a day, four days a week. His name is Corbin. He's a two-year-old German Shepherd. He uh, specializes in explosives and apprehension. And I train with him every day, and I and I take care of him every day. But once I get to the station, I I put out some fines, which is explosives, around the station, and uh, probably about four or five explosives. I let it sit for about five or ten minutes, and then I bring Corbin out of the car, and then. I send them out to find those particular explosives. I will either put them high, low, medium, it doesn't really matter. I can put them in cars, I can put them in a building, I can put them outside, I can put them on fences, and he'll, he, he's gonna be able to find them. It's a lot of work. Um, you have to really train your dog every day to make sure he stays on point in case he is needed for an emergency situation, such as a bomb call out, or an apprehension where deputies are fighting with a suspect and the suspect fleeing and he's a danger to the public. So we will get called off for something like that to try to apprehend the person safely without other people getting hurt. I always take him with me. Just in case something was to happen, I'll have him with me and I don't really worry about it too much because I know he's there. I know he's there to protect me, the deputies, and the citizens. Law enforcement is already dealing with the homeless population and the mentally ill population. Um, and now I have the time to maybe even do it all day long to try to solve a problem. Our last point in time count, I believe there was over 300 people who identified as homeless in South County. Um, down in this area that we specifically went to, there was about five camps, but um, homeless people are, as they say, are transient in nature, so they are moving around a lot. We tried to, as the CAT team, to really come out here and make contact with our homeless population. You know, they say building relationships just comes down to time and just regularly checking on them. Hey, how are you doing today? We might bring out some bottles of water, maybe some socks, and hey, what's, what's your needs today? Where are you at today? Just to start to build that relationship because law enforcement has been seen as law enforcement and we still are that. However, we want to be that conduit into services also. It's more, of at this point is building a relationship with them so that in the event that they have to move from a location, they'll do it just based on a request by me. So I'll start typically in Oceano, here in Oceano, and um, I'll ride, we have four wheelers. I'll ride the levee, make sure that there's no encampments um, on private property. Um, then I'll make my way down to where we're at now and make contact with the individuals that live down here um, I always offer them resources. Um, I carry a big backpack with me that has all kinds of different things in it, socks, toothbrushes. Um, and then, you know, I'm continuously trying to get them 
to take my offer to go to Prado um, or the Homeless Coalition in Grover Beach, uh, you know, make that first step of getting out of this type of living condition. We are really just kind of meeting people where they're at at the moment. It could be maybe an ID. We might take them to the DMV and help them go through that process because they need an ID to maybe get into a shelter or maybe they're looking at a job. So it might be the next step is I, uh, an identification. It could be actually taking somebody to the hospital or helping them make a mental health appointment. We don't always know where we're going, but there's typically a next step that we and the person can work on together to try to have a better resolution.